Many thanks for staying with us here on Newsdesk. Now, he's hated by the West, loved by Africans, and seems to be living in his own world. President of Zimbabwe, Robert Mugabe, known for his bluntness in expressing his views, has become perhaps the most popular African leader today. But he's unhappy about the spread of that fame. Now, he says, many quotes attributed to him are fake, even though they have striking resemblance with his views. Now, here's one. Quote, if you are still waiting for your goods at Temahabo, please go to Seko. By now, it would have landed there. Robert Mugabe, a few minutes ago. I'm sure you become more too familiar with such quotes. And uh, this has been circulating uh, on social media for a long time, particularly on the day when there was a bit of flooding in Accra. Now, Zimbabwe and Embassy here in Ghana have some concerns about that growing trend. And uh, the ambassador, Pavlin Tendai Musaka, joins me in the studio for a discussion on this. But we'll first talk about uh, a fair that's coming up. It's called Diplomatic Fair 2016. Uh, Her Excellency Musaka is also the dean of the diplomatic corps in Ghana and uh, would help us understand what we stand to benefit from this fair. Your Excellency, uh, good morning. Many thanks for joining us. Good morning. So let's start off with this diplomatic fair. I mean, wh what is it all about? Yes, the diplomatic fair is actually a fair which is open to both the public and private sector to exhibit their products. And uh, as far as the diplomatic corps in Ghana is concerned, this is a shop window to actually advertise and also inform the Ghanaian government and the private sector of what we do on a full-time basis in our embassy. Mm. And uh, for the first time, this is actually the private public sector uh, uh, event, which is uh, on a win-win basis. And normally we don't usually have, have this, but fortunate enough, with the partners that we're working with, the organizer, Precise mm. Communications, they took a bold step to do what many governments would do themselves and also other parastatos, but they've taken it upon themselves as private sector players to assist government and facilitate the diplomatic fair. And we are very much impressed by that but bold move. That's, that, that's good, but I mean, wh what's the importance of the fair to the diplomatic organizations that are accredited in the country, in Ghana? Let me use uh, an example of my own uh, country, Zimbabwe. This is the only opportunity where I get to focus on my country besides the National Day reception. Mm. But uh, this is different because uh, at the National Day reception, we restrict the numbers of guests that attend. We don't engage the public. But this is an opportunity for us to have the one-on-one -on -one engagement with the public and uh, explain to them what we are here to do in Ghana. A very good example is my own government has adopted an economic blueprint which many people in the world don't even know about. But uh, this gives us an opportunity to explain that under this Zimbabwe agenda for sustainable socioeconomic uh, transformation, Zim asset, Zimbabwe is really open to both private sector in our region, SADC, as well as uh, Africa and the whole world. We are making Zimbabwe's uh, 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 regulations user friendly for the business community. Mm. So we are saying come and engage us during this diplomatic fair, 16 to 18 of uh, June this uh, week and uh, hear from us, and many other countries are also exhibiting. There are quite a number of embassies, especially from Africa, this particular event. And uh, you I'm quoting Nigeria, South Africa, Burkina Faso, just come and uh, hear what we have to say. And uh, we believe this is only the teaser. Many more embassies will come on board mm. next year once they see and observe that there's a benefit, a lot of benefit from engaging. I, I'm, I'm looking at trade and investments and how this fair will enhance it. Okay. Okay. In the case of my own country, I will use it as an example. Okay. We are bringing in products that are made in Zimbabwe. Many people do not understand that Zimbabwe is on the move, especially economically. We are, our economy is now picking up, and uh, you will see the number of products that are made in Zimbabwe. I'm inviting you to come and see what Zimbabwe is offering. Mm. But of course, there are many other countries which are there. South Africa is very strong on tourism. You are going to see what they're going to exhibit. Nigeria, you know what they also produce, they're very big in their area, Burkina Faso, and many other countries. So please come and uh, both government institutions as well as private sector and also the general public. Just come and see what the diplomats have for you. And those that want to travel to our countries, it's also an opportunity for you to know in that in the case of Zimbabwe, you don't need visas to go to Ghana. But uh, other countries, they'll tell you 
what visa requirements, what visa regimes exist between Ghana and their respective countries. Okay, so now how can uh, individuals and organizations participate in this if they want to? Well, we have the, our, the organizers who are Ghanaian, our joint venture partners in this uh, event, and uh, that's Precise Communications. They are available to actually register okay. because that's part of the private sector. We are only getting involved where the diplomats are concerned. There's very clear division of labor. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, which institutions are supporting this venture? Fortunately enough, we have quite a number of private sector players in okay. Ghana who have uh, caught on the idea. We've got Standvik, Uni, Bank, Kenpon uh, Travel, who are saying we're ready to travel throughout Africa and we'll, they'll promote it through this uh, exhibition. And then we've got uh, quite a number of others who, the list is a bit long, but uh, we have a lot of Ghanaian, yes. uh, in all, there's about 14. Okay. Yeah, Tala that's Tours, that's who are also the joint venture partners in this project. Okay. So uh, qu quite a lot happening in uh, Zimbabwe, I mean, and even here in Ghana as, as relates to Zimbabwe. But, but then uh, for you hearing such things about your president and his quotes and, uh, I mean, it's all over social media, I mean, that should get you a bit worried, or? I don't get worried. What actually uh, strikes me is that uh, I just get surprised that this is coming from African journalists and Zim as far as I'm concerned, if uh, an African doesn't respect another African head of state, I don't know who else should respect him. It's only Africans who should show the leadership in respecting our own leaders. So when I see and hear those quotes, I say to myself, let's not go to those levels. And I engage and challenge the uh, Ghanaian media as well mm -hmm. as African media to start respecting your own. Charity begins at home. But, but some would say they are not necessarily derogatory in any way. They are just blunt, straight to the point. And... Uh, to a large extent, some would say, will reflect the views of uh, uh, President Mugabe. I mean, has he even come across any of these quotes or tweets? Okay, professional journalists are supposed to do their work professionally. You don't attribute a quote to somebody who has not quoted. Uh, th th this has not really got anything specific to do with journalists. It has to do with virtually everybody who's on social media tweeting or texting or uh, sending messages. The leaders in this job are the media. They can correct it. I know it. You have that capacity to do so. But fortunately enough, you gave, you gave me this platform mm. <laughs> and I want to congratulate you for doing that so that I can also urge the media and also members of the public that there's no need to do that to any head of state under this sun. Has, has President Mugabe seen these tweets and quotes? Of course, he's got sources from all over <laughs> the, um, the world who will give him that information. What has been his it. reaction to them? Because he's a statesman. Statesmen don't react to little boys and girls. Is he offended? Not at all. He's not bothered by them? No. He's above that. You know him. Mm. He's had to fight giants <laughs> like the, <laughs> the Tony Blairs of this world. So what's so... Not little boys and girls it won't do anything to him. Th does he see this as a sort of endorsement uh, by the many people who are tweeting uh, for his strong views and opinions? Well, let me say something. When uh, you are in leadership, you are aware that many people will say a lot of things against you, some of them positive, some of them negative. But as a leader, you don't respond to those kinds of little comments and negative ones. You don't. It's of no use. It's of no consequence. They can go on for another year, a century. You, they will not have any effect on you. But what I'm just saying, as respectable people and Africans, Agenda 2063 means we should now be working together and in integrating Africa. Let's focus on building Africa and improving the economy of Africa as opposed to getting so petty. And uh, to the youth especially who mm. have no time, sometimes they waste their time. Can you please uh, divert that attention and energy that you have into creating something that's going to help employ, uh, create employment on the African continent? That's my message. So clearly the president may not be so happy about it, but he hasn't commented on it at all. That's what you say. As far as I'm concerned, and to the best of my knowledge, I have not heard him make an issue out of it. If they told he has made an issue, I'm not up to date. I may have to be advised. I'm not aware. Mm. But some say uh, over the past decade or so, Zimbabwe has been in the spotlight, not necessarily for the entirely good reasons we would all hope for. Uh, yes, we can say the economy is now re recovering, but uh, I, I mean, uh, just opposing the challenges and, and the, <laughs> the current trends now, in society. I mean, uh, how does he maneuver all these things? Okay. Uh, I was the then acting High Commissioner mm. in uh, at our Zimbabwe High Commission in 
the United Kingdom, mm -hmm. when this whole issue, the whole war against Zimbabwe land reform program in 1997 started. So I was at the thick of things having to deal with the BBC media. Mm. This is why when I say I'm dealing with Africans, I will not tolerate any nonsense from our own people. But when it comes to those, the media in the UK, they, I also engaged them and also gave them my peace of mind. So I'm saying, please, let's not dwell on these issues. We have more challenges to face. Let's feed our people on the African continent. Let's create jobs for our people. Those young boys and girls who have that time to waste, I invite them to the embassy of Zimbabwe. And then we start sitting down as the dean of the African Diplomatic Corps, mm -hmm. and then they can help me also find the ways of addressing the challenges of creating employment on the African continent. That should be our focus. Yeah. You think President Mugabe has been unfairly bastardized by the foreign media? As I said, we're used to it. If for me, I'm but so used to it. Do you think that's the case? I, it has been the case, but as far as I'm concerned, it's of no consequence. I'll repeat it, because I have gone through it myself when my own head of state was being uh, attacked in the media in uh, the UK. Mm. And nobody can do it better than the British in attacking our president. Although of late, there's been a uh, thawing of relations and things have improved. But I'm just talking about the history. We cannot forget about that history. But on the way forward, we're now working very well with them, mm. including the CNN and all the other media in the first world. And we're saying, let's move on. Zimbabwe is ready to move on. Just uh, what you can do for the benefit of future generations. Right. Excellent. Many thanks for your time on his desk this morning. And uh, that was the Dean of Diplomatic Corps for the Zimbabwean High Commission, Pablo Tendai Musaka, who joined us on his desk uh, to shed some light on, obviously, the diplomatic fair that is currently being uh, organized in the country. And uh, she also told us a few things about uh, those very popular Mugabe quotes uh, that have been circulating on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook and uh, also via WhatsApp as well. He says the president is not perturbed by those comments at all and is not in any way going to respond to people who expect him to foreign stars. So you're watching his desk here on the Join His Channel on Multi TV. We're taking a break. When we come back, we'll bring you updates in the world of business. Stay with us.